Hello and welcome from Sardinia. Many have tried it, few have succeeded in finding the golden mean. This year it's Aprilia's turn to try it with the new Touareg 660. Whether they have succeeded. Twenty twenty two will possibly be the year of the mid range touring enduros. Aprilia is bringing a lightweight off road adventure bike in the form of the Touareg six hundred sixty. But the typical Aprilia character and sportiness should not be lost in the process. On Sardinia, we were able to test how coherently Italian Ferrari can be combined with adventuring. For years, the big adventure bikes dominated the market, below which nothing really happened until the A two class. This hole in the travel enduro range between over 48 and 100 horsepower began to fill in 2019 the Yamaha Tenor 700. Next year, several manufacturers will follow suit, including Aprilia. Aprilia Touareg 660, not the first Touareg. Touareg is not a new model designation at Aprilia. Already in the 80 seconds, there were Aprilia Touaregs, but at that time, still with single cylinder engines and with moderate success. Later, the Italians from Knoll tried once again to enter the ADV segment with the Capenord and powerful 1200cc V engine. But here too the breakthrough failed to materialize. This time, however, a solid technical basis, typical Aprilia charisma and the right placement on the market should ensure success. The former is the easiest to measure, because the Touareg shares some components with its 660cc system models. Engine response of the Aprilia Touareg 660 2022. You don't have to believe that just because the Aprilia RS 660 and Juono 660 came out first. That for the Touareg they simply took a sporty engine, tuned it a little differently and then slapped an adventure fairing on it. According to the developers, they had the Touareg in mind as early as 2017 in the earliest stages of the 660 unit. However, the 659cc inline two-cylinder has been retuned and now pushes out its power from low and mid-range. Instead of close to 100 horsepower, as in the RS and Juono, the Touareg has 80 horsepower at 9250 revolutions per minute and 70 Nm at 6500 revolutions per minute. The maximum torque is only 3 Nm higher on paper, but it is available 1000 revolutions per minute earlier. In addition, 75% of the 70 Nm is already applied at 3000 revolutions per minute. And you can feel that. Agile around the corner, road performance of the Aprilia Touareg 660. The inline two-cylinder engine revs cleanly from just under 2000 revolutions per minute. The Touareg marches briskly forward and even lifts the front wheel to salute with a little help. It is so beautifully precise on the throttle that acceleration out of the bend is very controlled. The Aprilia's ride-by-wire manages to offer a very authentic and somehow satisfying feeling at the throttle. The quick shifter, unfortunately not stock equipment, whips crisply through the gears and the changes are quick and fluid. Only below 3000 revolutions per minute it sometimes doesn't want to switch. Caught up in the frenzy of the angular movement, however, I rev much higher anyway, wind out the gears. Make use of all 80 little horses and when you then exceed the 5 to 6000 revolutions per minute threshold, the exhaust also begins to roar like a lion. Remarkable sound for a stock muffler. On the road, however, it's not just the engine that excites, but above all the handling. 
In designing the Tuareg, Aprilia built the masses tightly around the bike's center of gravity. The tank nestles in a staircase shape against the engine, which is also positioned Nandek more upright than in the RS 660 and Chuono. The compact mass of 204 kg needs only a small steering impulse on the wide handlebars and it already tilts willingly in a sloping position. The engineers in Knoll have managed to find a good balance between the tippy agility of Enduros and the stability of road bikes. The Tuareg doesn't fall nervously into the corner, but it also doesn't need pressure to lean. On the twisty roads of Sardinia, it goes rapidly from radius to radius and I feel comfortable on the Tuareg 660, thanks not only to the engine and handling, but also the great seating position. The narrow waistline allows for good knee room. The long and narrow seat offers a lot of freedom of movement. But another important player has its fingers in the pie on the Tuareg. There is nothing there isn't, the electronics package of the Aprilia Tuareg 660. The Tuareg's electronics package is not only extensive, but also highly customizable. Of the four riding modes, urban, explore, off-road and individual, the latter two can change the four parameters of the electronics as desired. These four systems that can be influenced are the traction control, with four adjustable levels, the ABS two levels, the engine brake control three levels, and the throttle response, power delivery three levels. Thus, the behavior of the motorcycle can be adapted to any requirement. Of course, there are some regularities in the riding modes. Urban is the most easy-going mode, Explore is the typical country road mode, and in off-road mode the traction control allows the most slip unless set otherwise, and the rear wheel ABS is disabled. If you want, however, you can even turn off the ABS completely. The traction control can also be adjusted and deactivated at any time via the cruise control lever. The compromise between street and off-road. Does the Aprilia Tuareg 660 find the golden middle? Aprilia says itself that they want to fill the gap between adventure bikes and dual sport motorcycles with the Tuareg. But to make it work both on the asphalt and in the wedges, compromises have to be made in a few places. Long suspension travel is needed off-road, so Kayaba's 43mm upside down fork at the front and Kayaba shock at the rear offer a mighty 240mm of travel. Great for hard hits and jumps, suboptimal for a good feel on the road. But Aprilia has also done a good job here, giving the suspension enough firmness to avoid big swings and a spongy feel on the tar. Of course, the long suspension travel can't magically disappear, and especially while big bumps or hard braking maneuvers the vehicle starts to move quite a bit. But smaller bumps and irregularities are ironed out well, even when leaning. The tire dimensions are typical for a Touring Enduro 90 divided by 90 minus 21 at the front and 150 divided by 70 minus 18 at the rear. Mounted on the 21 inches front and 18 inches rear rims are the familiar and tubeless Pirelli Scorpion Rally STR tires, which already take the place of the stock tire in many models and offer solid performance both on the road and in light off road conditions. The third area of compromise, and also the place where you feel this split between the two worlds the most, is the brakes. The two 300mm brake discs with two piston calipers from Brembo just don't have the bite you'd want when you're sporting down the road. Especially the first few centimeters of the brake lever only grip very gently, which was deliberately tuned for off-road use. And only then does the brake bite harder. Don't misunderstand, the brake works well and stops quite reliably if you grip hard. However, when you drop the anchor before the bend, perhaps even while going downhill, the desire for more arises. On the other hand, you'll be happy about the brake's fine tuning in off-road terrain. Especially with the rear brake, you feel precisely when the wheel starts to lock. Fun on all loose surfaces. Two points lead to success off-road. The off-road capability of the Aprilia Tuareg 660. If the engine was already fun on the road, it's brilliant off-road. The power delivery is so linear that even I, an off-road noob, can control exactly when the rear wheel breaks free. It can also be driven cleanly at low revs, which makes life immensely easier, especially at more difficult passages. Coupled with the cleverly intervening electronics, the Tuareg is almost foolproof to move off-road. And to make sure that you also feel comfortable, the great ergonomics take care of that. It's rare that I have nothing to complain about when riding an off-the-shelf motorcycle in standing position. But the Tuareg, with its narrow waist, high handlebars and just the right shape of tank, manages to feel familiar and just right from the start. 
It remains questionable, however, how well really tall people can cope with the corners and edges of the bodywork. With my 1.85 meters in height, the ergonomics seem like they were made for me. But with longer legs it might not fit anymore. It's best to try it out for yourself. Small people, on the other hand, should be able to cope with the Tuareg. The seat height of 860 mm is no challenge thanks to the narrow seat. Long distance capability and comfort of the Aprilia Tuareg 660-2022. Third area where adventure bikes should perform well is long distance capability. Despite the hard enduro style seat, it is not overly hard and quite comfortable. To be fair though, hundreds of miles of iron butt stages were not included in the first press test. Aprilia's accessories catalog, however, also offers a comfort seat with gel filling. In any case, the Tuareg saddle is comfortable for a long time, also thanks to the relaxed knee angle. Still important for the long haul is the consumption and the range. We couldn't check these ourselves yet, but Aprilia states an economical consumption of only 4 liters per 100 kilometers. With the 18 liter tank, that promises a range of up to 450 kilometers. Not bad. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about the wind protection of the Tuareg 660. The legs and the body are well shielded, but the low and not height adjustable windshield directs the airflow at nose level to the helmet, where it rushes violently around the head. Hopefully, the touring screen from the accessories can remedy this. Otherwise, the Tuareg is competent at high speeds on the road. The engine doesn't feel like it's struggling even at 130 plus kph, and it is stable on the road. The standard cruise control is also very handy here. People with frequent companions or heavy luggage can also be happy about the sufficiently dimensioned legal payload of 210 kilograms. Comfort, check. Range, check. High speed performance, check. Apart from the suboptimal wind protection, the Tuareg 660 is certainly suitable for everyday use. Thanks to the accessible engine, it can also be driven very discreetly at low revs in urban areas. Who is the Aprilia Tuareg 660 made for? All in all, the Tuareg offers a very good package in my opinion. It manages the compromise between off-road and on-road better than most motorcycles and will certainly be able to inspire some fans of adventure in the coming year. Although the mid-range segment will probably grow by next year, at least now the Yamaha Tenor 700 is the Tuareg's main competition. In my opinion, however, the electronics make all the difference here. Some don't want the assistance and instead just want to rely on their own wrist and skill. For these purest and durists, the Yamaha remains the better choice. For those who like lightweight adventure bikes, but do not want to say goodbye to the safety and comfort of electronics, the Touareg is certainly interesting.